All right, guys, thanks for stopping by once again. I generally don't do wrist checks, although people have asked for them. Probably won't start now, but I felt like today would be relevant. I'm wearing an 80s icon. Well, actually, I'm wearing a 2020 version of an 80s icon. This, the Casio Data Bank, the calculator watch, uh, seen in many 80s movies seen today in film, uh, but since we're looking at 80s icons, I watched this, this Weiss watch, watches are meh. Uh, it was a good video, nice guy. I think he missed the point, so I thought I wanted to kind of take hold of that point here. Look, if you've bought any of the watches under the Swatch Group umbrella, you can thank this gentleman here, Mr. Hayek, for helping save those brands from the brink of extinction. When they wanted to liquidate, he wanted to create a new industry. And he did just that by putting those over 100 brands into a group that would create a simple second quartz timepiece uh, to sell uh, first in very few numbers, but quickly grew into an 80s icon basically by promoting crazy colors, by partnering with pop icons of the day, Thompson Twins, Huey Lewis, different brands, and then also creating partnerships, limited editions, with some of the most influential um, artists of the day, going all the way through the 80s, into the 90s, and even into today. Over-the-top partnerships that made everybody want the watch. And quite frankly, if you lived through the 80s and 90s as I did, the Swatch watch was the thing to have. And I have to be honest, I didn't even know Tony Hawk did a Swatch watch partnership. That's pretty hilarious. Uh, these guys, I remember them well. I'm surprised that was 2011. It seemed a lot longer ago. Um, yeah, just about anybody who's anyone has done a partnership, including Hodinkee back in 2017 and also more recently, um, 2018, you have this modernized Mickey Mouse watch. I missed out on this one myself. A little upset about that. Uh, 1983 through 2021 and still going strong, guys. My friend Paul has loaned me this excellent chronograph, this SCK111 uh, quartz chronograph to kind of do a once-over on and just kind of talk about Swatch. This one from 1996, it's in like new condition. You can see the chronograph works very well. Um, the jellyfish case, nice and clear. That's one of the issues with the jellyfish case is it does tend to stain and turn. This one nice and white. No cracks on the buckle. No cracks on the uh, bracelet or band, I should say. Um, I love this black and white on the jellyfish uh, with the silver hands. I did not know this model even existed. Taking it outside, you can see uh, this is a really cool timepiece for what it is. Uh, back in 1996, these would have retailed for approximately $40. These days, they're going for much, much more uh, as collectors are grabbing them up, just like uh, you have collectors that collect exclusive things like Speedmasters or G-Shocks. You have 
um, collectors that are exclusive to the Swatch Watch as well. So when you find a Swatch Watch that you like, that's in a uh, price point you can afford, I would grab it before the collectors do. You can see how easy it is to change the watch battery in the Swatch Watch. All you need is a nickel, something that was increasingly more difficult in the Japanese quartz watches. Um, you'd have to take your mechanical movement to a watchmaker. You'd have to take your quartz uh, watch from Japan to a watchmaker. These guys, you could just buy a watch battery and change it yourself. Something that was pretty revolutionary. The shape, the materials, the way that the case is completely fused to where the movement, the hands, uh, the dial, it's all infused in sealed completely into this case, something that was revolutionary of the day. And in 1983, these were very space age looking. I remember going to the 1982 World's Fair and getting a peek at these things uh, before they even came out. Super crazy designs even when they weren't crazy colors. Um, they got more crazy. Uh, this day, if you get on their website, this one with its black band and black buckle and jellyfish case looks quite tame. This 37.5 millimeter case fits very nicely on my six and three quarters wrist. And I wanted to model it because this is another genius of Hayek. He created a watch that was mid-size that would fit little girls, it would fit little boys, it would fit adults of the day, and everyone would be okay with it. These days with the massive size of watches, it's a little small, but when you think back to the 80s and 90s, that makes sense. It's small enough, it's petite enough to fit a kid, it's large enough to fit an adult, and it's fun without being insane. You have the fun watches, you have the more conservative watches within the same brand. Again though, these were not meant to last 10, 20, 30, 40 years at this point. But if you look at this one from 1996, it looks brand new. If you look at timepieces from 1983 from Swatch Watch, they look for the most part, brand new. So while they were not designed to last that long, the quality is much better than first impressions would lead you to believe. You would look at this and go, oh, it's a plastic watch with a plastic band and a plastic face. It's going to break. That has not been the case. My camera did not just break, guys. This is the loom. This is the disappointing thing about many, many Swatch watches. A good bit of the Swatch watch um, line does not have loom. If you want to look at them in the dark, you're not going to get to. Uh, you can still find this watch on the eBay, guys. Just type in uh, S. CK111, and it'll pop up. Most are sold out. Some are in bad condition, like this stained case on the left here, but they are out there if you want this specific timepiece. If you don't want this specific timepiece, but you do want a Swatch watch, um, by the way, this one is still available at 135 pounds, uh, so it's not cheap, guys. But if you do want a Swatch watch, but you want a modern one, the Swatch watch still has a website, uh, hundreds of watches on there. They actually still have boutiques, one in New York, many all over the world you can visit and take a look at. Uh, 400 stores, as a matter of fact, over 400 stores. 
for a little plastic disposable watch that was created in 1983. I, it's just dumbfounding. But we're all very lucky for it because all these brands benefited from this little plastic timepiece. And if it hadn't have been a success, we might not have the brands we have today. And if they had not hired Mr. Hayek to liquidate these companies, we may not have had these companies today because he saved them. So I know this was a little different. It wasn't purely focused on the uh, timepiece. It was a little bit of history as well. I just, I wanted to do something different, guys. I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for allowing me to have a little time off for my birthday and the holiday. We'll see you soon.